Hey, as you know, I'm uh, reading quite a lot of books and uh, doing courses and listening uh, different uh, uh, podcasts or to be more specific, actually, uh, YouTube channels and various topics. And that include, includes a lot of uh, Christian and Catholics, Catholic books and materials. And since I've noticed that uh, many of you are interested in this topic more and more, I thought that instead of writing to all of you separately or uh, telling you over the phone or over the lunch, I will just start to record some reviews of the materials that includes books which I'm reading and maybe sometimes also share uh, some reflections as I read them. So the first book which I selected for today is called Chasing the Dragon by Jackie Pullinger. It's amazing. Uh, I really love it. And uh, not only as a Christian, but also in general, it's a very interesting book. Jackie Pullinger uh, is uh, still alive. So it's a story, very recent story, you could say. And it's a story about a girl who, when she was 20, decided to follow her calling and uh, traveled from UK to Hong Kong and ended up in the Walled City. Walled City at that time was a very, very bad district where even police hesitated to enter. And it was a lot of crime, gangs, prostitution, uh, drug addiction, like really, really, really bad. And this is where she ended up. And the whole book tells the stories about what happened there, how she lived there for many, 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 many years. And uh, why I like this book is because it's very interestingly written with uh, a lot of different uh, uh, interesting stories. Uh, for instance, I can, I can tell you one or read you a, a piece of, of one of the chapters. So one of the gangs which were there was 14K. 14K was a gang... Uh, which was formed in China in 1949 and uh, it, was, it had around 100,000 members worldwide at the time when this, uh, when this story happened. And basically, uh, Jackie was dealing exactly with such people, with the, with the, lower, uh, the lowest rank uh, members as well as the like top, top ranks uh, gangsters. And one of the stories, for example, goes like this. She met at some place with one of the uh, gang uh, leaders uh, of the lower rank. And she told him that she wants to meet his boss. So she says to him, who is your die law, David? I asked. He looked terrified and shifted about on his plastic seat. He won't want to see you. But what is his name? I persisted. His nickname is Jesus. David said out of the side of his mouth, hoping that the others sitting there had not heard him reveal all. But he won't want to see you. Why don't you ask him? If you are going to be a Christian, you can't follow two different leaders called Jesus. You must decide which one. Okay, said David, I'll try to find him. And he went to the telephone. While he waited, David's friend ate pink ice cream while I drank more cups of coffee. At last, David came back, looking surprised. He will see you. You are go to go to... You are, you are to go to block 20 of Chai Wan Resettlement Estate at midnight tonight and find the noodle stall. Someone will meet you there and take you to Jesus. But you must take hundred dollars. Why the hundred dollars? I asked curiously. Well, nobody in Chai Wan knows you, Miss Poon. David replied. It's not as if it was the walled city where you are protected. Chai Wan is a very dangerous area at night and you might get mugged. If you have hundred dollars, 
they will take it and leave you alone. But if you have nothing, they will be angry and beat you up. Don't be silly, I reasoned. I haven't got ten dollars, let alone one hundred. I'm not, not taking money. Why, well, he said that she was protected in walled cities because that was the time where already uh, the, the gangs and uh, people living there knew her because she was there for many, many years when this story which I just read happened. So then she went at night alone. And, and it's very interesting what happened. She actually met the leader. That leader had, I think, around 1,000 people uh, uh, below him. So it was quite high rank. And there were many more stories like that. Uh, one was also very, very, probably the most kind of dangerous. One of the most dangerous was where she met <coughs> one of the leaders in order to convince him to let some girl go. Uh, because uh, this leader didn't want her outside, uh, out of the gang and out of the job which she was doing for them. And uh, she, of course, wanted to uh, that this girl uh, will be free from them. So she met with this uh, gang leader in the coffee shop in front of the place where she lived. And she lived with a lot of drug addicts and she was helping them get out of the drugs and gangs. So as she as she sat in the cafe, those drug addicts or ex drug addicts were uh, across the street looking uh, from the roof of the building to see what, what will happen and and help her if needed. She didn't really want to engage them because she was against violence, so she was hoping nothing will happen. And basically, the story goes like this. Uh, he ranted while I tried to tell him about Jesus, but he didn't want to hear. I was stuck. I thought, I tried to tell him about Jesus and he doesn't want to hear that. Neither is he going to listen to reason about the girl. I, I really am cornered. I was frightened. Excuse me, can I make a phone call? I bleated. I telephoned my house, which they still did not know was opposite, and spoke to Willie an old Etonian who was helping us for a year. Don't look now, but outside the cafe there are two cars with men with knives in them, he said, and it sounded as if he were speaking out of the side of his mouth. They are waiting there. I was terrified, out of my mind, so I whispered to Willie, call the police. Then the police came, but as the police came, police came the other cars went, went away. And long story short, she ended up again still in the cafe after the police left with this uh, dangerous gang leader. And then she says, so the police all went away again. And as they went, the cars came back. I was still stuck there, not knowing what to do. The one thing that I could do in this situation was pray. But I could not pray in English, for I was in a complete blue funk. I decided to pray in tongues very quietly so that they could not hear. My knees were shaking under the table and I went on praying. I had no idea what I was going to do next, for this gang was getting more and more furious and I could not see how it was going to end. Finally, I got up saying, I have to go and buy some vegetables. Trembling violently, I walked out of the cafe. And as I walked out, I could see men getting out of the cars, which were parked close together. They were walking towards me. I did not know what would happen and was still more frightened than that the world city boys would leap in and fight on my behalf. Mercifully, a mini minibus was passing, and although I did not know where it was going, I jumped on and got away. I went straight to the police station. I want to report something. I'm afraid there might be a murder. I tried to tell the police about the emergency phone call and about the man with knives looking for Angel. Angel is the name of the girl. I'm sure they are going to go to her family's home. They don't know where I live yet and have no way of finding out my address. But they are going to go to her home and I know they are going to give her family members trouble. 
They all looked very bored and asked, where does she live? In Shekip May, I told them. Well, that's not our district. And so on. Very interesting, this story also. And like I said, the whole book is full of such stories. And I believe it's very, very interesting for someone who who is who doesn't believe. But if someone believes, then it's even better for them because it's great examples of how how God works in the current world and it shows that the faith the God is not just a philosophy which we believe here which happened many years ago and happened after we die but is actually something that is real and existing in this world and happening today so it's a very, very interesting book and I definitely recommend to read it. However, one disclaimer, it's also, of course, the worst district in the Hong Kong that time. So there are a lot of really bad things described. So uh, it's not def- from that perspective, it's not uh, sometimes pleasant to read those, those things. Okay, great. I hope you liked it and uh, I will continue probably recording more of the books I'm reading on on various Christian topics and hopefully it will inspire you to to see which book could be interesting for you or maybe movie. Thanks, bye.